Okay, so we are recording. Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming along to live stream training today. Um, my name is Miriam Robinson. Uh, the training will go, <clears throat> we've got an hour and a half. Um, actually, we've got uh, two hours if we need it. Uh, we'll see how we go for time. It depends how many questions and comments and things people have got. I'm going to do the uh, slideshow, <clears throat> which should take about probably an hour, a bit less than an hour. And we can have sort of a half an hour or so for questions and comments and um, discussion afterwards uh, if, if people have got questions. Um, if you could all <clears throat> mute yourselves so that there's not too much uh, noise in the background, unless you actually want to speak or say something, that'd be great. If you've got any questions, um, ideally it'd be great to leave those to the end and we can have those at the end, or you can make a comment in the chat if you think you might forget your question. Um, and uh, so without further ado, I will start the uh, live stream, the slideshow. And uh, come on, from beginning. Great. So can everyone see that? So um, yes, Facebook live stream training for XR. Um, I would like to acknowledge that we are meeting on stolen land. I personally am in Ballarat, which is uh, Wathaurong land. Uh, and pay my respects to the elders past and present and uh, also the people on the other all these other people on their lands which you are on in different areas of Australia um, and also acknowledge that we are in a climate emergency and pay respects to all the people who are working so hard to try to do something about this terrible situation we are in they find their energy and their hard work to solving the climate crisis. So, ugh, there we go. So, oops. So my name's Miriam Robinson. You may have seen me doing live streams on the Australian Facebook page. Uh, I've been doing this for many years, um, live streaming. And uh, today's talk will basically be a new summary of all those things that I've picked up over the years on live streaming, how to do it, technicalities, what buttons to push, and also some tips and tricks for making your live stream as best as they can be. Um, so just a quick summary of comms and what we're doing with comms. I'm not gonna to talk too much about messaging, but just a brief run through uh, the sort of things that we talk about with comms and what we're doing with Extinction Rebellion. So our main purpose, um, for recruitment with our comms is recruitment for our comms at the moment. So we're very much in recruitment mode. We need to build a movement of 3.5% of the population being actively involved in the movement in order to make change happen. A lot of science and history behind all this, uh, this number of 3.5%, but it's generally believed that 3.5% people being actively involved in any kind of uh, movement makes change happen. So we, have our um, obviously our three demands uh, which is tell the truth, things like declaring a climate emergency, act now, net zero by 2025, and beyond politics, citizens' assemblies, and of course, the climate emergency. So, those are our basic key messages we always try to refer to. We want to engage people emotionally. Um, with uh, emotions is, is the best way to get people motivated rather than statistics and science and facts and figures and those sorts of things. So the powerful emotions that we want to engage are love and fear. We want people to feel happy and included and inspired and enabled and confident and hopeful and brave and defiant and angry. And yes, we want them to be afraid, but we don't want to make people feel helpless and there's nothing that they can do. Um, we don't want people to feel bored or excluded or disempowered or anxious or depressed, you know, it doesn't really help us. Um, we want people to be always called to action. We can, we must, we're going to do this, Good, join us, we've got love, we have fun, we have a good time. Always accentuate the positive, look at the brave people, come to our event, please share, join us, get involved, these sorts of messages. 
Um, we want to eliminate the negative. We don't want to get into arguments with people. We don't emphasize conflict. We don't want to blame and shame. We don't want to be preaching to the choir and banging on about climate science because we'd have to assume that most people who are watching our things or doing our things, coming to actions, have a fair idea about that. That's why they're there. We don't want to offend anyone. We want to be respectful to everyone, which includes the police. And we'll talk a bit about what that all means when you're doing a Facebook Live um, as we go along with the talk. So Facebook live stream, why? What's it, you know, what's it all about? So Facebook live streams are very popular with viewers. We always get the most views on live stream videos on our Facebook compared with photo, photographs or uh, newspaper articles or these sorts of things. Live stream um, is pushed by Facebook. It's a, it's a exclusive feature of Facebook, although other platforms these days are um, doing more uh, live streams. So Twitter and Instagram and all those sorts of things um, offer live stream now. But if someone goes live, Facebook will pop up a thing saying so and so is going live. They get a lot of views. Um, they're very handy <clears throat> uh, thing to get more viewers on your very actions rather than just a few photos um, of your action. Facebook live stream has that sort of spontaneity and immediacy and excitement to it that uh, a beautifully constructed video doesn't necessarily have. I mean, beautifully constructed and edited videos are, are great um, <clears throat> and they have their place and there's nothing wrong with them, but there's nothing like a Facebook live for the excitement and the immediacy of, oh my goodness, what's gonna happen next? Because anything could happen. And that's kind of the excitement of Facebook Live, um, watching it unfold as it's happening live, or even if you're watching it back later and not knowing how the end's going to come out. Your Facebook Live might be the only historical record of your action. So you might do this action and <clears throat> it be lost in the mists of time unless you've actually got a live video of it. So that's a very important just as an historical record. We can tell our own stories <clears throat> our own way on social media. So. A lot of people have probably had the experience of we do an action and it might get on the news and the only bit that the news shows <clears throat> is um, some conflict that happens or someone just being arrested or someone being irate drivers or this sort of thing. So we get to tell our story our way and get our message across. Hang on, I'm just going to open the door. Sorry about that. Um, <clears throat> so we get to tell our stories our way. We put our spin on it, not um, not the spin, the spin that the media likes to show. And um, just a little note to live streamers, please don't get arrested. Uh, <laughs> I was watching a live stream a while back and uh, the live streamer got very carried away and uh, decided he wanted to get arrested and he handed his phone to someone else and then they handed their phone to someone else. And at the end of the day, didn't know what was going on. The person said, oh, I don't know, I'm just holding the phone. Someone just gave me their phone and they ended the live stream because the live stream got all overexcited and got arrested. So don't do that. So uh, yeah, just a little note, a little funny story. Um, right, so <clears throat> technicalities. There's a certain amount of equipment you're gonna need to do your live stream. Um, you need a decent phone, a smartphone, either an iPhone or an Android, relatively new phone. Um, most of the phones these days are pretty good, but if you've got an old phone, that's no good. If you don't have a decent phone, you may have to borrow somebody's phone. You need a reasonable amount of data. Um, Facebook Live does suck up a lot of data. Um, so hopefully you've got some extra data on your phone. You will need to download the Facebook app. Uh, just You can't do it through an internet app like Safari or, or Chrome or anything like that. You have to have the Facebook app on your phone. And it's a very good idea to have a portable battery charger, little rectangular jobby, and obviously a cable to plug it in because your phone, if you're lucky, if you've got a good battery and it's fully charged, will last maybe an hour, maybe not. So very good idea to have a battery that you can plug into the phone before you, um, you get that all ready before you even start filming because your phone will run out of battery at the most exciting moment without fail. Just when something really exciting happens, bang, no battery. And it'll go all fuzzy and weird for the last few minutes of your video as well while the battery's running flat. So get yourself a battery pack. Um, they're not cheap, they're about $100 or so, but they're very handy things to have um, anyway, to have a battery pack. Now there are optional extras. I personally 
don't really use all these little knickknacks, but they're very handy and I probably should invest in them. So a mini microphone, so a little job like this, a little microphone that you can plug into your phone and it's a good idea to have a little clip that you can clip onto your jacket or something. Um, and you can hold it out towards somebody speaking. And we'll talk about this in a little while, but um, when you're doing a Facebook Live, the microphone will favor you. you. So if you're interviewing someone, it's often very difficult to hear what they're saying. And in fact, I think some recent upgrades or up, you know, software updates to phones have made this even worse that it's almost impossible to hear someone speaking. So a little microphone that you can plug in and hold towards the person is a very handy thing. Uh, some people very much like to use a gimbal, which is this little jobby here. Um, they cost between a hundred and a couple of hundred dollars or you can get cheaper ones, but the idea is you click your phone in there. You can hold it like this with one hand and it keeps the phone from shaking, keeps the phone steadier and doesn't get your hand tied. Personally, again, I don't use them. I just use the phone on its own. It's up to you. Some people like it. Um, a recommended uh, one is a DJI Osmo Mobile, which is supposed to be just the one in the picture here, which is supposed to be very good. So you can invest in one of those if you like. I don't use one, but a lot of people swear by them. Um, highly recommended that you wear a jacket with big pockets. I seem to be always having like a battery pack in one hand and a, something else in another pocket. So wear a jacket with some pockets. Comfortable shoes. You will be running around often backwards during an action. So make sure you're wearing comfy shoes and a bag. I use a backpack, so I have a bag on my back or a bag you can put over your shoulder so you're not kind of juggling around and dropping things while you're trying to run about doing your video. So yeah, pretty straightforward, pretty obvious, but you'd be surprised. Uh, people who turn up with no pockets and a bag that keeps dropping and these sorts of things. So basic equipment. I just use my phone and a battery pack. Perhaps I should get a microphone, but uh, up to you. So when you're doing a live stream during a, an action, in an ideal world, your media team for your action involves all these people. So theoretically, it'd be great if you could have two people on your live streaming team and do it as a team. Um, one very good reason for that is so you can watch out for each other and buddy up with each other. And so you're not feeling like you're on your own. You're often in the thick of things when you're live streaming and <clears throat> it's good to have a buddy. So a second person to helping you with the live stream. While you're doing your live stream, it's nice to have that other person to bounce off, to talk to, to chat with while you're doing your live stream. And the other person can be off interviewing people while you're just filming them rather than you trying to film an interview at the same time. So it's very nice to have a second person sometimes to help you. You can hand the phone over to them if your arms are getting tired and they can do it for a while and you can have a bit of a break. Um, the second person can be taking a few short videos. So little short videos you take on your phone, two minutes or so are very handy for Twitter, for using later for other things, and could also be taking a few quick snapshots um, with their phone while the action's going on if you have a, uh, a helper. And it's also a terrific way to shadow a new person learning how to do the live stream. So it's a great way to train a new person if you have two live streamers. Also, ideally, when you're doing an action, it'd be great to have a proper photographer with a proper camera to take quality photos. They're always very nice to have for the historical record and they're very handy for all sorts of other things. And if you're really lucky, you might have a videographer who can take some quality videos of your action that can be edited up for later for other things. If you're lucky, you might also have a spokesperson who can do most of the talking. Not everyone's confident speaking all the time. So if you're a confident live streamer, but not a confident talker, it would not be a bad idea to have a second person to be the spokesperson. Now this could be your, your buddy, or it could be someone else entirely who's doing the, the spokes. And they can be interviewing people for you and they can dash off and do a media interview. Now I was once doing a, a live stream and the media crew was there and they wanted to interview someone and they didn't have anyone to interview so I had to give my phone to someone else and let them do the live stream so I rushed off and did an interview then I came back. Ideally you have a spokesperson who can be doing a bit of media if you're having a big action that likely to attract media and even more ideal in a really ideal world you have someone we call the eye in the sky 
which is somebody at home watching on their laptop. They can be moderating comments. So if you get any trolls, they can be zapping them. They can be adding in a link into the comments while you're talking. So for example, if you're talking and saying, oh, you know, there's the forestry logging and it's this and it's that, they could whack a, a comment in there for you while you're doing the, um, the live stream. And also to deal with any issues that may arise during an action. I had a situation once where we were live streaming and we were expecting these, this boat to arrive, this flotilla of boats to arrive on the river at the same time as the Red Rebels were going across the bridge and there was all this stuff going on and somebody couldn't find what was going. And um, quite often, I don't know if it's just because it's me or they just think because I've got the camera, I must know what's going. And people kept coming up and asking me what was happening. And I'm like, I don't, 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 I'm doing this now, I can't do it. So I, I knew that there was somebody at home watching. So I just said, um, perhaps we can find out where those boats are and uh, you know so they sort of made a couple of quick phone calls and sorted that out for me while I was uh, doing the live stream so I wasn't trying to triple manage three things at once so if you've got a, a big action and you've got someone that you know is at home uh, watching you um, they can help with all those interesting things like huh we can't find the van does anyone know because you can find the van some silly things like this that happen um, that they can just deal with for you while you're while you're busy filming so in an ideal world, that's your media team that you have, certainly for a big action. If you're just doing a little one, you don't need all that. Two live streamers would be enough for a sort of a small to medium sized action. But if you've got a big one, it's very handy to have all these extra people if you've got that luxury. Um, so having a practice now, you can all do this at home. If you've got your phones handy, unless you're actually watching the video on the phone, get your phone out if you want. And um, just to, this is how to push the button. So you open your Facebook app. If on your phone, you should have your Facebook app and open that up. Create a post on your own page, what's on your mind. Okay, so just type some text, you know, it doesn't matter, just write test or something. Okay. And then you'll see that you can add to your post. Now, there, there's on mine at the bottom, your phone's all slightly different, but on mine, I'm seeing the three dots. So you click the three dots, slide down, and you should see live video. Okay, live video. And mine's turned on and it's facing outwards. And I'm filming you guys. I'm not actually pushing the film button at this stage. But if you turn your phone to the side, you should see the image and the writing flip around to the side. Is everyone having a go at that? And you can also go into selfie mode. There's a little button on the top left-hand corner which looks like a little camera with the arrows selfie mode you can turn it into selfie mode so you can see yourself Hello. self and then you don't have to do this now do it later but you then you would just click the the button the blue button camera boom, and you'd be filming okay you can add a location you see there there are options to add a location or tag your friends which you may want to do you may not want to do so how did you, did you all manage to push those buttons? Yes, thumbs up, wiggly fingers. Yes. Did your phone flip around when you, when you rotated it or did it not flip around? Ah, okay. So we're gonna talk about that in the next slide. So orientation, very important. Um, you want to do your Facebook Live in this landscape orientation. You don't want to do it like this. This is bad. Now, a lot of people do it this way. And there's a couple of drawbacks to that. One is that on a laptop, on a computer, this looks really bad because it has this kind of gray stuff down the sides, which is bad. Uh, the other bad thing about that is it's very hard to get a lot of um, action in 
when you've got the phone in this way. It's a bit like peeking through a keyhole trying to see what was going on. Or alternatively, you have to kind of wave the phone around all over the place to get all the action in and see what's happening. If you have it this way, it looks much better on a computer screen, looks fine on a phone, and you, you can get a lot more in without having to constantly wave your camera about to try to get all the action in. So always have your phone landscape. And you want to have the button on the right hand side, not this way, because you can, it's been done, I've done it, film the entire thing upside down. So you want to have your button on the right hand side and the microphone and the button on the right hand side. Sorry, left handers, it's just how it is. Um, I have done videos upside down. It can happen. Okay. So if your phone is not rotating, you need to be checking that auto rotate, if it's an Android, is on, or if it's an iPhone, orientation lock has to be off. So how do you do that, right? Okay, so if you have an Android phone, you're at your main menu screen, you swipe down and it should bring up this menu right on an android swipe down it'll bring up this menu and you've got your auto rotate there you turn that on just to be perverse on the iphone it's the exact opposite on the iphone you swipe up whoops sometimes you have to do it a few times to make it work there we go swipe up and you should get this menu and you will see here orientation lock turn that off Okay, so turn your orientation lock off. You click that button, it'll be on and then it'll be off. Okay, so have a play around with that later on. Has everyone figured that out? Good, people watching along and playing along at home. Um, right, so above all, you want to avoid this. This happens a lot. Um, so this is when someone thinks they've got the orientation lock on or off or whatever it should be. They're filming away, la di da di da, doing their video, but in fact the whole thing comes out like this, and there's nothing you can do to fix that afterwards. That's just it's, it's just basically ruined. So you have to watch the whole thing like this. Um, yeah, this is what this is what we're seeking to avoid by fixing that orientation lock problem. I've seen this happen more often than you 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 know you want to believe. Very very bad when that happens. It ruins your whole video. It's a terrible shame. So you've got the great long hour long video of all this exciting stuff going on, and it's just sideways. So this is what we're seeking to avoid. That. So <clears throat> preparation. Um, at least the day before the action make sure you have editor access to the page that you're going to be posting to right if you want to check that you've got access you don't know if you've got access or not you open your facebook you look here at this this bar thing here you'll see that you have however many pages you might have like this person's got 12 i've got a similar number there's heaps of pages so click that your pages find the page you're looking for, whether it's Extinction Rebellion, you know, Sydney, Queensland, Brisbane, whatever it is, click on that. And you should theoretically be bouncing to that page. And then the process would be exactly the same as what we did before, create a post, type some text, make sure you're around the right way and start recording. I had a situation once where someone was doing a Facebook Live to the Victorian page when I was doing the national page and they didn't know what to do or how to do it or anything. So they kept trying to phone me while I'm doing the video, trying to get me to help them to get into the page while the action had already started. So check that the day before, at least the day before. And uh, if you haven't got access, then obviously get in touch with them and get that sorted out well in advance, not on the day, because it might be too late to fix it by then because the person might not be contactable or they might be in the middle of filming their own video. So that's very important. Check that you've got access to the page. Sounds obvious, but you'd be surprised. Um, 
Also a good idea before the action the day before is to obviously find out exactly what's expected to happen at the action. Um, if there's a pre-brief, go to it. Um, is there something particular that's going to happen that you don't want to miss? Like they might be doing some special thing and you don't know about it and you miss it. Um, I was doing one where we had a boat in the um, art gallery moat. And I, I, you know, I knew they were going to get the boat and they were going to fool around in the moat with the boat. I didn't realise they were going to capsize it and tip it over and do all this. So I was, I was chatting away with someone in the crowd, you know, gossiping was, you know, interviewing someone in the crowd and I missed, missed all that because they hadn't let me know. It was my fault. I probably should have found out, but I hadn't known they were going to do that. So if there's something particular happening, you need to know what it is so you don't miss it. Can you get a hold of the press release so you can get some ideas about, you know, what the action's about, exactly what the issues are, so forth. Do a bit of studying up on the issue so you've got something to say when you're doing commentary. Uh, grab the organiser and have a bit of a chat with them, ask them about the issue, make sure you're worded up on what's, what's what to expect to happen. You can familiar, familiarise yourself with the issue if it's logging or gas or banking or whatever it is, you can do a bit of Googling, a bit of research the night before or so. Don't get carried away, but it's good to have a few facts in your head. So when you're doing commentary, you can think of something vaguely knowledgeable to talk about. It doesn't hurt to do a bit of Googling if it's the issue is about something in particular. Um, you can write down a few numbers, you know, a few important numbers. Um, millions of tons of something or other or whatever it is, dollars being invested in gas or something. Uh, don't get too carried away, you know, don't don't stress out having millions of facts in your head, but it doesn't hurt to have a couple of uh, interesting facts that you can throw into your commentary later on. And we'll talk about commentary in a, in a bit. Um, have a chat with the, uh, have a bounce around a few ideas with the media team and see if you can come up with some snappy snappy one-liners or some talking points or some funny things you know every now and again we've had a bit of a quick gossip beforehand and come up with some some snappy lines um which is all handy for your commentary trying to think of something to say while you're doing all the filming so it doesn't hurt to be prepared don't overdo it don't stress yourself out but a little bit is always good so you sound like you know what you're talking about um the day before the action it's a good idea to have a google drive set up um where you can drop photos and short videos and things in there and let your media team obviously know where that is. If you have a signal group or a WhatsApp group or something, send them the link. Um, that's very handy because you can be like, if your help is taking a few shots or taking a few short videos, you drop them in there. And then whoever's doing the Twitter or the Facebook or whatever can grab them and use them. And the media often, if it's a big action, will quite often put that link in the press release. And we'll tell the media they can grab photos and short videos from there because a lot of media these days are online or journalists have their own Twitter accounts and they will grab them and use them for their Twitter. So it's very handy to have that Google Drive set up in advance and put it in the media release if you're sending out a media release. Make sure your phone is charged, people, the night before and your battery pack. Charge that all up. I've, people have come to actions ready to do a whatever and they've got you know, 10% charge on their phone. Don't do that. Charge your phone up well in advance and your battery pack as well. Sort out your cables and all your bits and pieces and have them in your bag ready the night before. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I sort of have, you know, those dreams where I dream that I've gone to the action and I haven't got all my gear with me and, you know, this sort of nervousness. So if you did it all pre-prepared, then you just, you know, you don't worry about it. And you don't rush out the house leaving all your bits behind. <laughs> it's terrible. Um, it's a great idea to prepare some text in advance of what you're going to say about your live stream video. I will type it and put it into notes on my phone. There's a little notepad thing on your phone. So write your copy ahead of time. It takes longer than you think to type all this. And especially if you're nervous and your fingers are not behaving themselves and you're typing up this text into your phone and the action started and you missed the start because you're too busy trying to think of something or you can't think of something to say. So it's a very good idea to prepare your text in advance and you'd say something like this. So live, wherever you are, Sydney, whatever, Melbourne, Brisbane, whatever. Um, something explains what you're doing, a few hashtags if it's an issue and it's always nice to acknowledge country. So this is an example, live in Melbourne, holding the Fossil Fuel Institute account with a street blockade outside AGL headquarters, couple of relevant hashtags, and a nice little acknowledgement of country. Okay, don't write five 
paragraphs, just one is, you know, a little short thing like that is enough. If you have forgotten to do that and you haven't got any text and you haven't got anything to say, uh, and the action started, just start and worry, you can you can fix the text later. Um, if you get caught short and it's all begun and you've sort of missed the start because you're running late or for whatever reason. But <clears throat> very good idea to prepare some text in advance, have it on your phone. Sometimes I'll do it on the way to the thing on the tram or something, but the night before, then you've got plenty of time to think of something good to say uh, and have it pre-prepared. Um, okay, so you're ready to go live. You're at the action. It's all happening. You've got your text. You've got your phone, you've got your battery charger plugged in, everything's ready to go. Turn on do not disturb on your phone. Um, the number of times when I'm doing an action, I'm filming it, and the photographer starts phoning me because he can't find the action, or somebody rings me up or sends me a text or something, and that's fine, but it will make your phone, it'll make the video glitch. When someone rings you, it'll go gluck and it'll skip. And sometimes I've had it happen that the rest of the video from then on is all shaky. So turn on your do not disturb on your phone. There's a setting you can do. You still wanna be online. You don't wanna be in air, airplane mode because you wanna be broadcasting, yeah, but there's a do not disturb. So turn that on so nobody's like ringing you while you're trying to do your, your film. So you open your Facebook, you open your, get to the right, you navigate to the page you want, showed you how to do that before you start your thing, you paste in your text, You've got your phone horizontal, you've got your elbows in, you take a deep breath, you don't rush. I've seen live streams start where someone's filming their feet or the concrete. So they've got the phone, they're like, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Mm. And they push the button, they sometimes don't realize this, and they oh. So the first couple of minutes is, is them, their feet uh, or something, or people, or a bit of concrete, or someone, people all standing around. Don't do that. Take your time. Don't rush, set up an interesting opening shot. Okay, wait until something interesting is happening. Don't start, don't panic and start while everyone's just kind of milling around, standing around and there's nothing going on. Wait until it starts. Uh, Cause people will bear with you for a short while of that sort of stuff, but they won't, they'll just leave rather than wait 10 minutes for something to actually start. So wait until it's starting. Um, don't say anything for the first, second or two once you start filming because if you start speaking straight away it'll be missed because by the time people open it click it turn the sound on so just draw a breath um before you start saying anything the first few seconds of your um video are very important so if you have an arresting or interesting opening shot scene that's ideal so don't be filming the back of everyone's heads while they're all standing around doing nothing is boring. Is there an interesting prop you can start with? You know, we had these dinosaur costumes. We did an action once on Frodo's, um, Frodenberg's um, front steps of his office. And we had these three people in these big dinosaur costumes, you know. So we got them all to stand on the steps, lined them up, and then started with that. People, you know, they go, well, what's this? This is interesting, you know. If you've got an interesting prop or something, you can. that's great. Uh, if you don't have an interesting prop, you can get your spokesperson to do the intro. You can just film them. So okay, I'm going to start the video. You ready? You say what's happening and you push record and you go uh, and point at them. So when they're ready to speak. So or if you haven't got a spokesperson, but you know someone who's chatty or a good, you know, articulate person, just grab them and say, hey, can you do the intro for me? Or you can start in selfie mode. We showed you how to do that before. Start with yourself and go, hello, I'm here. I'll be doing the live stream. We're going to be doing this and we're going to be doing that. And we're going to, this is going to happen and that's going to happen and blah, blah, blah. And then you flick it back around and then start filming. So start with something interesting to get people's attention when they first, when they first join. Um, the show must go on. Don't stop and start. Like a lot of people will film three minutes and then stop and then they film four minutes and then stop. Don't do that. It's really super annoying. Just keep filming the whole thing. Um, if you've got a buddy, they can take some short videos for you on their phone. Don't be this stoppy, starty, stoppy, starty business. The, um, 
the thing um, about live streams is people like to feel like they're there. They like to feel like they're part of it. So if they're at home and they couldn't get to the action because, I don't know, they've got a bad knee or who knows what, they like to watch it because they like to feel like they're part of it. So get the whole thing. Um, you know, depending on the length of the action, if you've got someone chained to a train and they're going to be there all day, well, that's, you know, not very exciting, a bit boring. But um, if you've got an action that goes on for, say, an hour or something, just film the lot, the whole thing. Just do all of it. People, they can skip ahead or not if they don't want to watch the whole thing, but people like to feel like they're there. So don't stop and start. If you make a mistake, don't panic. If you um, stumble over a word, mispronounce something, uh, drop the phone. That's happened to me. I've dropped the phone. I've bumped into things. I've um, all sorts of silly things happen. Just laugh it off. It's all part of the fun when something silly like that happens. Don't worry about it. Don't panic and stop the video. Just keep going. It's actually part of the fun. I stepped on a policeman. Um, during one of the actions in Melbourne, I was walking backwards, filming something that went smack straight into a policeman stood on his toe. And uh, he was very nice about it. He just said, oh, there you go. And he sort of gently sort of went, Look, there you go. No worries. Said, oh, thanks. <laughs> Somebody said they thought that was the funniest, best part of the video. You know, uh, yeah, don't worry about it. If something silly happens, it, it's sort of part of the fun. And, and it's part of the, like I was saying, the spontaneity and the fun of live streams. You know, so if you bump into a policeman, or, drop your phone or something don't panic just keep going it's fine um move around slowly can't emphasize this enough um sometimes when people are doing a live stream they get very overexcited because your adrenaline's up and there's a lot going on and you can get very overexcited and there's a temptation to kind of try to get everything by waving the phone around don't wave the phone around uh, you'll make people at home feel seasick it's really annoying don't do it just move really slowly it feels really slow to you but actually when you're at home watching it's much better than this business don't do that very slowly walk slowly move the camera slowly don't wave it around it actually does make some people feel really seasick and they can't watch it and they have to turn it off okay remain calm just relax just you know Slowly, slowly move the camera out. Um, and get up the front. Okay, you're making history. Um, get up the front. Give people the best front row view of everything that's going on. Um, I've seen live streams of people, I don't know, maybe they're a bit shy or something, I don't know, they're filming a speech. And yet you can't hear the speech because the speaker's way up the front and they've got the back of people's heads. Get your elbows out and just get up the front, be polite, but just get up the front. You've got the camera, better still if you've got a buddy, get them to move people out of the way for you, but just basically get in there and get up the front and get the front row, best seat in the house view. Don't be shy, get it, right? Don't be, don't be hesitant about getting up the front. Um, oh. Oh, no. um, okay, so commentary, a few tips about commentary. So if you do commentary well, it'll make your video much more interesting, much more watchable, much more enjoyable. If you do it badly, it can ruin the whole thing. So commentary, not too much, not too little, the, you know, the Goldilocks uh, rule. So obviously important stuff is um, to tell people what's happening. That's, you know, your important part of your commentary. So occasionally you might want to repeat also for people just joining us. So every 10 or 15 or so often, not constantly, but every so often, especially because you can see the numbers of people going up and down who are watching. If suddenly a whole lot of new people join and sometimes they start texting in the comments saying, where are you? What's going on? What's happening? You know? So occasionally you could say, for people just joining us, we are in Burke Street today doing whatever it is we're doing because of so-and-so, so-and-so. Just a quick update on what's happening. That's a basic. Um, don't yell. The microphone is perfectly sensitive enough to pick up your voice if you speak in a normal speaking voice. Um, just as if you were speaking to someone on speaker. You don't have to shout into the phone. Uh, again, some people get a bit overexcited and they yell. I've watched some live streams, I just have to turn it off because I just can't handle the, the shouting into the phone. Um, so just speak in a normal voice. If there's a lot of noise, drumming, chanting, shouting and stuff going on, don't try to yell over it. Just stop talking. Just let the 
chanting and the drumming do the work for you. You don't have to talk constantly. Um, when there's a flat spot, when it's a quiet spot, when there's nothing much going on, like, you know, if we're doing a march and everyone's walking along the street, it's a bit boring for everyone to just to be watching people walking down the street. So grab someone, talk to them, do an interview, do a bit of commentary about the issue, like those facts that you thought of earlier, you know, the uh, all those terrific facts you've been Googling about the forestry industry or whatever it might be. So when there's a flat spot, do you talking? Don't try to shout over the top of drumming and chanting. You can say a few things about the issue. You can you can talk about, you can interview someone. And no need to talk constantly. Sometimes people just like to watch the action. Um, yeah, in fact, sometimes the sound of your voice can be a bit annoying. It's just ugh, like, oh, shush. I just want to watch the action. Um, consider visually impaired people. People who have bad eyesight or maybe looking on a tiny phone, you might say things like the banner says such and such, or the sign says so and so. You might be a bit descriptive of what's happening, imagining that somebody's eyesight might, might not be great. You can see it, but they can't, especially if it's in the distance. Um, that's always nice. Um, explain what's going on if there's something happening, like, oh, the police are just arriving now, or we're at, you know, for people just joining us, we're in so and so doing this, and the speeches are just about to start, or something like that. So explain what's going on. Um, there's no need to preach to the choir. There's no need to bang on about climate science. I've seen some videos of people just banging on about, oh, the icebergs are melting and the planets and the oh, it's terrible and the fossil fuel industry is bad and just basically preaching to the choir. A little bit of that's okay, but it's sort of annoying if you just do it all the time. Um, try to keep it interesting and relevant to what's going on if you can. Don't just get carried away and bore everybody to death with um, facts about climate science. Um, Every now and again, you can remind people how they can join the rebellion, give them the, you know, the ozrebellion.earth website, you know, details of, you know, join up, join the rebellion. You might mention the demands, you know, because the rebellion has three demands. A little bit of that's okay, but um, don't bang on and, and don't talk about it too much. Try to be amusing, entertaining if you can, informative um, as much as you can, and don't feel compelled to constantly speak all the time. Sometimes you can just let the action do the talking for you. Um, interviewing people is often the most one of the most interesting parts of your live stream. You go up to somebody and you say, hey, would you like to talk to Facebook? Um, I find the banner holders are terrific interview subjects uh, because they're stuck there and they can't run away when they see you coming to, towards them. Um, banner holders are great or it's just someone holding up a sign. You can say, what's, what's, what's on your sign? Did you make this sign? Tell us about this, tell us about that. If I can't think of something to say, say if, if you know the prime minister was watching this, if ScoMo is watching, have you got a special message for ScoMo or whoever? And a lot of people will will find that sort of funny and you know good way to um, think of something to say. If you go up to someone and they just go, no, I don't want to talk. Ooh, just go to the person next to them. It's okay. Don't worry. Don't don't panic. Um, just go to the person next to them. There's always someone who's busting to say something. Don't worry about that. One of the problems about interviewing people is being able to hear them. Um, the microphone, as I was saying before, will favour your side of the phone. It won't favour what's out going on on that side of the phone. Microphones at the bottom, you may need to angle the phone right up to them. Even if you can't see them, stick it right up near their face when you're talking to them. And sometimes I've had to paraphrase what people have said. So I'll go, someone will say something and I know they won't be able to hear it. Oh, ha, 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 and I'll repeat what it was they said so people can hear what they said. That can be really tricky. If you've got one of those little microphones, that's great because you can hold the little microphone up to them. But if you haven't got one of those, you've got to stick the camera right up in their face so people can hear them. Um, yeah, like I say, put the microphone up close. Or if there's noise going on, you can sort of turn away from the noise a bit. So if there's a drummer or a chanter or something going on behind you, turn around so that they're not behind you anymore. Um, so the, the background noise isn't too bad. Alternatively, a really good trick is you can flip the phone over into selfie mode and then you stand next to the person and they, then you can, the person, if you're in selfie mode, you can even give them the phone. I've done this, I'll just give it to them and they'll frame themselves or you stand next to them as best you can and, and tip, flick it into selfie mode and then they can be heard really clearly and uh, um, yeah, and then you can just flick it back around again. Um, if someone's squinting into the sun or their face is in the shade or something, if you're talking to them, you just turn around slowly and they'll follow you. They will. They always will. 
So don't film someone going like this because it's awkward for them and it's awkward for the people watching. It feels uncomfortable. Just turn a little bit to the side and get the sun out of their, their eyes. If it's windy, um, which can often happen, make sure the wind's not blowing into the mic. You may need to turn around that way so the wind's not blowing into the microphone. Um, always a good trick. So yeah, interviews, a bit of tricks. The being heard is one of the most difficult things. That's why those little microphones are very handy. And this selfie mode trick is, is a beauty. So people can be sure they can be heard. Um, speeches, we're almost there folks. You can get to ask some questions in a minute. Get up the front. Like I said before, don't stand up the back, get right up the front. Um, stand relatively still and just film the speech. I've seen people doing a speech and the, the person thinks maybe it's getting a bit boring or something and they kind of wave, they wander off and wave the camera away somewhere and, and miss half the speech, it's super annoying. Most people want to hear the speech, so just film the speech. You may want to, like when there's applause or something, you may want to turn around a little slowly, again slowly, and show the audience so people can see the size of the crowd. Um, but most of the time, just keep it on the speaker and just get that speech. Um, make sure the speaker can be heard. If there's a sound system, like if there's a speaker, like a microphone, you know, with a sound system, PA, make sure you're standing with the person making the speech there, but the sound system behind you, because remember the sound wants to go that way. The microphone wants to pick up that way. So stand in front of the PA so that the sound can be heard clearly. If there isn't a sound system, again, get up as close as you can towards the speaker mm -hmm. as much as practical. If there's background noise going on around you, move away from it, turn yourself to the side, somehow to get rid of that background noise. During this speech, actually, there was some construction workers using some kind of drill thing, which was really weird. So I actually had to, I walked around to the other side of the speaker to get as far away from that annoying construction background noise as I could. Or if you're near a busy road and that sort of thing. So go around the other side of the person to try to get away from background noise as much as possible. Right, so you've done your live stream. It's looking terrific, fantastic job. It's all happened. You go home in the evening or your eye and this guy can do this for you and give it a title. This is a working title. So you open the video, go to edit video, give it a working title like, you know, um, you know AGL, blockade, action, Melbourne, blah, 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 and a date is also nice to have. If you have mucked up your text or you've made a typo or you thought of something better to say or you want to add something, you can edit the text in the comment, which is the thing that people see. They don't really see this bit. I'll show you in a minute what that's for. Um, you can fix your text up if you made a mistake or a typo or changed your mind, you want to say something else. Check your thumbnail. So this over here, the thumbnail. The Facebook will kind of automatically just pick a a frame in the middle of the video, bang. And it might be a block of concrete, it might be a car, it might be a truck, it could be something weird, it might be bad, it might be a terrible photo, it might be a good photo, it might be a terrible photo. If you click on thumbnail, you can flick through and find a really nice image that sums up the video, that makes sense, that looks attractive, that's appealing, rather than, you know, something like this. Um, you can make a clip. There's a new thing, you can create a little short clip. So if there's a really good bit, you can actually just clip that bit out and make a, a nice little short video, something really interesting or fun happens or just an interview or something, you can make a clip. That's a fun feature. Watch the video back over again, critique yourself. You know, I do this a lot. I sometimes obsessively watch things over and over again and you know, go, oh, I should have got the phone closed. I couldn't hear a word that person was saying or you know, whatever um, you're doing or gee whiz that, I missed the you know, good bit or that was a bit boring that bit, you know, so critique yourself. So you get better. Um, look at the comments, moderate them. If someone hasn't done that for you, you, you know, delete the trolls. Maybe reply to a couple of them. You could add in a link, like you know, a join the rebellion link, <clears throat> or a link to something about gas or whatever it is that your issue is about, that your event is about. Share it out to other groups and share it out. Share your video to other groups. So if you've got an allied group. Um, you know, so frontline action on coal or stop Adani or your local group or whatever, you can share the video out to them. 
I think I'll talk about that a bit more later, but it doesn't hurt to share it out to other groups and pages. Um, when you give your video a name, and I was saying before about the title, this, this business here, um, and a thumbnail. See, this is, this is why it's really handy when you're looking back later trying to find the dashed thing. If you've given it a name, um, that comes in really handy. And see, I've chosen a nice thumbnail for all of these as well. Something that sort of sums up what the action is about, you know, dancing in the fountain, you know, Melbourne 28th of March. So then I can actually find the videos. So giving them a finishing touch to the titles is very handy uh, for later, if you have a lot of videos. Um, yeah, keep pushing it out to other groups to get more eyeballs on it later. Um, if you've done a really terrific U Butte video of something really interesting, I will send it to the international page. I just message the page and send them a link and say, hey guys, here's our video of uh, something we did today in Melbourne. And quite often they'll go, oh beauty, and they'll stick it up on the international page. So if you've got something, don't send them the video of your cake stall, you know, <laughs> unless it was the world's greatest ever cake stall. But if you've done something really good, international loves, they love having material from all around the world. So they don't mind at all if you send them something. Um, you could like the shares and like and reply to the comments. So if someone's shared your video, see this is three shares. You open that, you can go like, 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 and you like the comments. And this will also push up the number of views. The more interaction, the more views you'll get on your video. So you've done all this hard work, you may as well get it out there so people can see it. Um, yeah, that's the slideshow. Do we have any questions or comments that you would like to discuss? I'll turn off the share now so you can, and you can all unmute yourselves if you want and um, questions. Fantastic, thank you, Jenny. <laughs> huh? Everyone's stunned. There must be some questions. Um, <clears throat> I've got one. I've only I've only got an iPhone seven at the moment. Is that just ridiculous for the purpose, or still possible? Yeah, it's not ideal. It'll probably still work. Um, I would suggest if you make a short video or make a live stream video just on your own home, like your, your personal Facebook page, mm. very good idea. And something I strongly suggest is like, so you have, you get your phone, you do it to your own personal page and make a short video of the kid playing with the dog or somebody cooking dinner or mm. something going on or walking to the shops, you know? So have a practice, very strongly suggest you have a practice on your own page you say, well, I'm here today walking to the shops. This is my street. This is my house. This is, I'm going to the shops, whatever. And make a live stream to your own page just for fun. And um, then, you know, sh finish it, share it. Well, that's something I didn't put in the slide. So I should add, once you've finished your video, you push end video and then you push share. Very important, you hit that share button. Um, if you do something really stupid, don't share it. But if you do something fun, share it. Watch it back yourself and see what it's like. You can always delete it later if it's a disaster. Um, but yeah, have a practice with your phone and see how that how see how it looks. A seven might be a little bit old, like the camera might not be great, but give it a try. Yeah, thanks. No worries. I must update the slides to show that how you finish it. Um, I was once watching a long live stream. There's this kid on a train, a coal train. He was there all night for hours and it was all very exciting. And the cops were trying to get him down and all this stuff happened and he was going on and on and on. And then the cops came up and grabbed him and the video ended and he hadn't pushed chair. Oh. So it was gone, gone, oh. wow. gone. So make sure you push that share button at the end. That's very important. Yeah, it was a shame because it was very exciting watching this thing. This kid was up there and the cops were there and, you know, but they yeah got up and grabbed him and took his phone off him and video was gone forever. A bit of a shame. Anyone else? Uh, Miriam, I would, I would make a comment. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, it's very annoying when I see live streams done in profile view. This, this, um, portrait, this way. Exactly. Yeah. And, uh, you did say earlier on how to avoid that, how to start it in landscape. 
but some people these days do actually do it vertically, um, deliberately. And that's most annoying because it's such a narrow view. Yep. Uh, when I'm looking at home on my widescreen, it looks like I'm looking through a paling fence. Yes. And it's hard to get uh, a number of people in shot. It's hard to get a wide shot. And you get a lot of sky and a lot of useless information. So that's one of my main bugbears when I do watch a live screen. If they start in profile view, I switch off. I fully agree. I It's awful. Um, some people like it because they watch them on their phone. That's fine. But you can actually watch it on your phone this way and you can see much much less space wasted and you can see more of what's going on. And there's a couple of questions in the chat here. Wait a second. How to share out to other page, pages beyond co-host requests, not being able to share to XR page, for example. Yeah. So basically just copy a link of your live and Facebook message us and we will, if we like it, if we think it's good, someone will post it up and share it to the Australian page. So just inbox us. Um, if we think it's rubbish or it's sideways or it's crooked or something, we might not put it up. But if it's any good, I mean, we love to get material of action, people, other people's actions. It saves us having to hunt for them. When I say ask someone. Sideways, the page, it, won't. Hey? <laughs> it won't be sideways, don't worry. I've learned no. that one. <laughs> That's good. Excellent. And Ruth has asked, any hints on live streaming when police arrive and things go a bit awry? Yes. Um, indeed. Um, no one knows what to do for a few minutes. It looks messy. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'll, I mean, this, this happens and this has happened to me a number of occasions. Um, just keep explaining what's happening. Um, so we did an action um, at the Herald and Weekly Times, which is Murdoch headquarters in Melbourne in South Bank. And we wanted what we wanted. We had this guy wearing this Murdoch paper mache mask and he glued himself to the floor. It was very funny. Um, and we wanted to get that shot of the police arresting Mur Murdoch, you know, that's what we wanted. And the police were having none of it. And uh, they kicked everyone out, including me. And there's a bit where I'm sort of saying, oh, go on, people, people want to see the picture of Murdoch getting arrested. And the, the police didn't have any sense of humour about that at all. Um, so we all got chucked out. And uh, then I was kind of trying to film through the door. And I was like, oh, look, I'm trying to get a picture for you, people, but I can't see what's going on. Sorry about that. But And I was just describing what was happening. It looks like, oh, yes. Oh, yes. It looks like they've, you know. So I just commentate and explain as best I can what's going on. Always obey police directions. Never get arrested. Um, if the police tell you to get off the road, just get off. Um, because they will, if they're naughty, they'll grab your phone off you or they'll, and then your video's done and you finish, you're done, you're cooked. Don't get arrested, like I said before, and just obey police direction. So if they say get off the road, just get off. Yes, Scott. Can I just ask him further to that? We've sometimes done um, uh, actions inside <laughs> Len Lisa's building and there's been security, not police, but security who've said, stop. I've not been live streaming, someone else has been live streaming, I've been taking photographs. And they've said, oh, stop taking photographs or stop live streaming, whatever, you're not allowed to do that in here. What do you do then? It's um, not police trying to arrest you, but they're telling you you're not allowed to do it inside their premises. Yeah, just ignore them, you are allowed. Okay, cool. Um, uh, they'll try it, they'll try it. They will, they always do. They tried that on. Um, the, being in a bank can be a bit sensitive. Um, I've seen times when people have been in the bank branch doing stop a -dunny stuff. The banks can get a bit very iffy about you filming inside the bank branch. But other than that, there is no law saying that you can't film inside their building. That's just nonsense. Sure, so, if, if yeah. they're saying that, is it best to um, sort of try to try and move away from them so that they're not their voice isn't being picked up by the live stream or, you know, you don't want to get into an argument with them, but yeah. is it just yeah. best to move away, just stay quiet and move away or? Yeah, that's what I'll usually do. A couple of times the security guard has said, don't film me. And I'll go, okay, mate, no worries. And I'll just take the camera off them. That's fine. They don't want to be in the film. That's perfectly fine. And that's another thing too. Sometimes it's always nice to check with people if they're cool to be in the video say hey you don't mind um saying something to or i'm doing for facebook do you mind saying something to you can say that to them before you put the camera on them um it's, a it's good manners 
uh, be, uh, you know, they might be somewhere they're not supposed to be. They might have chucked a sickie from work. They might be wagging school. They might be with someone they're not supposed to be with and have all sorts of reasons why they might not want to be on Facebook. So it's always polite and good manners to ask someone. Yeah, I've done had security guys saying, don't film me. And I said, that's fair enough. Cool. No worries. I won't film you. That's all right. I can film over here. But they can't stop you. I've had a security guy try to grab my camera once. Oh, oh excuse me. I beg your pardon. Back up. And then you get one of your buddies to, to speak to them. You know, hopefully you've got a marshal or a police liaison person or something. If a security guy's getting a bit aggro, don't try to do that and film. I've had a security guy try to grab my camera once. Like you have very quick reflexes. And uh, one of the things we teach in NVDA training is if you're filming and someone does that, tries to grab your camera or something, whether you quickly hand it, give it to someone else, one of your friends. I've had that happen. So you, that can, it does, it's pretty rare, but pretty unusual, but it can happen. Does that answer the question? Yeah, they've got no right to tell you to stop filming. They, they'll try it. Thanks. And if they don't want to be in the film, that's fine. That's just just manners, you know, like I said, always be respectful. Um, the police, um, when we're doing something, I'll always be very nice to the police. And if the I say to the cop, you don't mind being in the Facebook, they'll get her. most of them go, I don't care. And some of them do. So just it's just good manners, really. I have good manners. Um, I'm looking at the questions in the thing here. Last stream I did my connection wobbled a bit and I lost connection for a few seconds right near the beginning which seemed to impact a lot, yeah, on the, um, seemed to impact a lot on the number of viewers as it didn't look good. Yeah, that can happen. It's good to have good data, um, have a reason, reasonable amount of data on your phone. Also, sometimes when I've been doing actions, um, like a big action in the city, and everyone pulls out their phone and starts filming you, like bystanders, members of your group, everyone's videoing. And it can put a lot of strain on the, um, the, you know, Telstra, the tower, whatever, the substation, whatever the word is for the network. And it can get all jumpy. There's not much you can do about that um, other than just hope that it goes away. Uh, sometimes people will um, comment and say, oh, your video has gone all really weird. And I'll often say, oh, the video has gone weird. Sorry, folks. Um, I'll sometimes I'll move around somewhere to try to hopefully I could maybe get a better connection. And then I'll ask people in the comments, I'll say, put in the comments if the, is it better? Is that better? Is that better? And people will comment and then they feel part of it. And that's fun for them. So that's really about all you can do when that happens. Uh, yes, Jenny. Um, some time, thanks a million for this. It's fantastic. Um, no my connection dropped out while I was watching, but so I'm not sure it, whether or not this came up, but someone had said that if you're live streaming, it's best to turn your Wi-Fi off because your, your camera keeps looking for Wi-Fi around the place and depending on your settings, that can upset things. And if you close down all the other programs you're using as well, because something might just update itself, like go and find all your emails. That's a good idea. That, that can be using some of your data as well so that's that's a great tip do nothing but live stream yeah i mentioned putting on do not disturb which is a good one because someone tries to ring you while you're doing it. it's a bit of a nuisance but yeah that's that's a good idea turn off the turn off the wi-fi maybe even turn off your things like your um what is it location and all those sorts of things i mean don't go into airplane mode because you need to be on the net but turn off a few extraneous things yeah it doesn't hurt at all good idea thanks for that yes jenny go on Sorry, another question. Okay. And I was disappointed to find that I had to actually download the Facebook app and put it on my phone. I have been so avoiding that by just using it through my browser. But I, when you said, try this at home, I tried it then no, I could just put up a video, but uh, you know, I, I don't know even whether it would take much of a video before it would just go, that's too big, go away. Yeah, that's so, right. Is there any, does anyone here know of a way of putting that app on your phone without giving it access to your contacts and your location and everything? I mean, you just have to have the app. Yeah. You can always remove it later if you don't like it. So it's not all pinging at you all the time. Um, you can just install it, do your video, then uninstall it later. It's a bit of a nuisance, but you can do that. 
so it's not always going ping pong, ping pong, bothering you in the middle of the night with, you know, notifications and all that. Um, just having a look if there's any other questions. Last live stream I did, my connection wobbled a bit. I've got that one. And thank you for clarifying. I've been 30 minute streams. Yeah, people put off in a sh world of short, quick clips. No, people love the live streams. The longer, the better. Uh, yes, Scott. Muted. Sorry, just further to um, what Jenny was asking about. On an iPhone, if you go into settings and then you go into the Facebook, you can, you can, I'm just looking at it, you can turn on and off location, contacts, calendars, photos, microphone, camera, all those things you can either have on or off so that the Facebook app has access to them or not access to them. So there you, you go. Down a lot of things from, from the app if you want. You turn off your microphone, you're right, Facebook's spying on you. Mark Zuckerberg wants to know your business. You probably, you probably need it on for when you're doing your live stream and then yeah, turn, you it turn it on for that. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? I think I've read all the ones in the chat. Yes, Param. So do you need to make sure you have space actually on your, like you need space if you're making a video? Does, does this stuff get stored in your phone? No, it goes straight up into the, right. onto Facebook server. It's not saved on your phone. Okay. And also with that lock business, whether you're in landscape or portrait, can you lock it so it stays in landscape? Or you'd have I, to unlocked so it doesn't stay in portrait. I think it only locks to portrait. I don't think it'll lock to landscape. Okay. So you need to rotate your phone. And another trick if you're rotating the phone, it doesn't seem to be you tilt it towards you, give it a little shake, it'll rotate. It seems like in the old days, it didn't seem to rotate quite as well. You need to sort of go like that a bit. So if you've got an older phone, it doesn't want to do it. Give it a little shake and point it towards you. Okay, thanks. It's a great presentation. Thank you very much. You're very yeah, clear. Very, very welcome. Are you going to make that recording available or, or at least yes. slides? Yes, it's being recorded now. And um, I think it takes, usually after you've end the recording, it takes an hour or so to process. And then, then I'll, I'll have a link that I can... Uh, share out to people who missed it or you want to watch it again or anything like that. Okay, thanks. Great. Anybody else? No, you're fully knowledge now with everything. Um, I'm going to make, I probably will do this again. There's a couple of things I thought of that I probably should have put in the slides because this is the first one I've done. One thing I was going to, and one clever trick I was going to share with you um, was that if you can't get a good view, like quite often the police will sort of try to stop you from seeing what's going on. Um, one thing I did was um, we had a thing and there was a whole lot of people sitting in the road and the police were all kind of like standing around so you couldn't see what was happening. And uh, there was a young lad, about 17 years old lad. And I said, here lad, hop up on this bollard up here. And he hopped up on the bollard and I gave him my phone. So he could get everything. So that's a sneaky trick. Uh, after my hopping up on bollard days, I might be not fully quite confident to hop up, especially when I'm holding a phone, but I just got this kid to hop up there. And that was really good because then I could sneakily get a view of what was going on. So that's just a little trick to share with people. All right, well, it seems like everyone knows. Any feedback on the slides, anything you think? I mean, I know you've asked me questions, that's great, but is it sort of good length, a bit over an hour? Any feedback like that for next time, things we could do better? Right. Miriam, uh, I could make mention of uh, some equipment that I found very good and useful. The first thing is just a hand grip, which allows you to hold the phone uh, level and uh, with one hand. You can also lift the phone up into the air and, uh, you, and that gives you a higher view. On the hand grip at the top, it has a cold mount which is for an external microphone. So the hand grip and an external microphone uh, are very useful and uh, uh, so I have found them so. I've got the hand grip here. It's a uh, oh, yeah. simple sort of device and it only costs $15 on eBay. Right. Yeah, okay. those things That's are terrific. Yes, that's been a, a really, really good uh, thing for me using. Yeah, highly recommend those sorts of things. That's another thing. Like if you're walking along in a walking along, walking along the road, doing a march, you know, blah blah blah, it can be a bit boring. You can get a bit boxed in, stuck behind people. 
and you can just see the back of people's heads. If you hold, you can hold the phone up in the air. If you've got one of those sticks, that's even better. And you can actually get a bit of a view of what's going on rather than just be looking at the back of people's heads. So that's a good trick. Yes, Ruth. So is that hand grip the same as the, you called it a gimbal or is it a different thing? There are lots of different types. There's expensive ones, there's cheap ones, there's there's heaps. Just go to your camera store or Harvey Norman's or JB Hi-Fi's or whatever and have a look. Yes, Scott. Yeah, a, a gimbal is something that has <laughs> little motors in it and it, you know, it it will keep the camera steady. Like you can be moving your hand around and it'll keep it steady. Whereas that hand grip is rigid. And so you've got to hold it steady. A gimbal is a lot more expensive than, than the $15 hand, yeah. hand grip. Yeah. Hand grip is better than holding it in your hands. And then a gimbal is another step up from that. Yeah, I have quite a steady arm, but a lot of people don't have a steady arm. And another tip is like, keep your elbows close to your body. If you're not using one of those and so that your hands are not shaking and don't drink too much coffee before you do a live stream. I should have mentioned that because sometimes you get very, you know, you get excited and the adrenaline and the police and, blah, blah, blah. and if you've had two coffees before whoops if you've had two coffees beforehand um yeah my phone's ringing um this business will definitely happen so yeah don't have coffee before the thing i've done that before yes jenny well that's me out i'm never doing a live stream then <laughs> oh, you well you have to get a gimbal if you've got shaky hands yeah. one of the things i thought about was that you know i tend to hold the phone like this was in fact you can grip it like that. You know, you can be really, as long as you're not touching the screen on this side, you yeah. can hold it with as totally firm hand, you know. Um, this way it can be knocked out of your hands and stuff, you know. Yeah. And it takes, took me ages to realise I could actually do that. And, yeah. You know, it's like you feel like you're covering some. That's fine. Screen or something. As long as you're not. It means that you get to hold it really firmly. Exactly. As long as you're not in front of the camera and you're not putting your hand over the microphone, that's a bad one. A lot of people will hold it like this and they don't realise they've got the hand over the mic. There was one guy up on top of a truck in Flinders Street. He hadn't done that many lives before and he was in selfie mode and he had his hand over the mic and you couldn't hear his... What's he saying? I don't know. Um, so yeah, don't put your hand over the microphone. I usually hold it like that. If my arm gets tired, I swap it to the other hand. But I mean, you'll work out your own style or you use one of those sticks or whatever your preference is. Yeah. But just don't put your hand over the microphone. Another, another trick with uh, the microphone is to cup your hand around it so that it's acting like an ear. And that yeah. uh, it's just an uh, increase. Yes, like that. Exactly. Hmm. You also do that when you're listening to the speaker, which I have been doing right now. Right. And also if it's windy. Sometimes yes. you get a lot of wind blowing in there and you can put your hand around it so it's not windy or turn away from the wind. Yeah. Okay, good tips. I'm learning a few new tips as well. Good stuff. Uh, Scott and then Jenny and then Param. Um, you mentioned comments, you know, people making comments and you're seeing that. I'm just asking about how that actually shows up. Like if you're doing a live stream and you can see on the camera what's, you know, being live streamed, do you do the comments just sort of flow up yep. on top of that? And yep, you can see them pop up while you're you coming. type your response to comments, you would speak in response to comments. Sometimes I will, I'll definitely. Um, like so, you know, if someone says hello from Sweden, I'll go, Oh, hello, Sweden, thanks for joining us. That's fun, you know, uh, especially when it's a bit flat and there's nothing much going on. Responding to the comments is a fun thing to do. If there's any trolls. Um, a, either ignore them or say, hello, trolls, we've got trolls, yay. Don't worry about the trolls, I will zap them later. You know, um, but usually it's positive. I usually just ignore the trolls, hoping that I've got an eye in the sky zapping them or else I'll go and zap them when I get home. But well, it's nice to say, oh, hello. Or somebody might ask a question like, where are you? I'm trying to find the march. Like, okay, we're on the corner of Burke and Russell Street. So it doesn't hurt to respond to the comments if you've got time and sometimes it's interesting and fun for the people watching that goes on. Jimmy, we're going to ask something. Oh, I was just going to say thanks for the tip about the um, the mic thing. I'll practice that. I'll even try and find out where it is. That'd be good. <laughs> it's on the bottom. It's you can see it. It's this little thing with the holes. Yeah, that's it. Besides, no, that's, besides that's, where 
other side, that one. That, oh, that's your microphone. Oh, okay. That, that's your microphone. So the hole to plug something in, that's the plugging in thing, but that's your microphone. On the other as side. well as the speaker. That's, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Okay. Pretty sure. Could be wrong. I know it's on that end. Don't put your hand over it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Param, you had a question before? I was just going to ask if there's some place where we could see some examples of your work. Yes, Australian Facebook page. If you go to Australian Facebook, Facebook is XR Australia. Oh, right. XR Australia and just go videos all, most of them are by me. Not all of them, but a lot of them are by me, especially during the Autumn Rebellion. I've watched, them. I've watched lots of them recently. They were great. Oh, thanks, Ruth. <laughs> Learned a lot. Yeah, thanks. And yeah, I strongly advise to just watch, like go to the Australian Facebook page, have a look at the different lives and for yourself and go, oh, I like the way they did that. Or I don't like the way they did that. Or, you know, so you can just critique, uh, critique them and, and pick up tricks, yeah. Now there's some more things in the chat. Let me see if there's a question in the chat or no, let's go. Oh, thank you everyone, so nice things, thank you. All right then, any more, uh, yeah, Brian? Uh, yes, just going back to uh, having the shakes, I found that on my camera, there is a button which is digital stabilization. And I've noticed when I'm holding the camera uh, doing an interview, I can see it, I can see my shakes, uh, but when it's replayed, that's, it smooths it right out. So okay. digital stabilization. That's good to know. Is that in, in settings somewhere? In the camera settings somewhere. I can't say exactly. I always have to look for things like that. Probably depends on your phone and what model it is and all that, but that's a, that's a good tip too. Yes. Depends on the camera as well, yes. Yeah, some of the new cameras, some of the new phones have got amazing stuff built into them. So it depends a bit on your, cam on your phone. <clears throat> Anyone else? No? Okay, well, we'll sign out. And uh, there's a document um, that I linked in the invitation to this um, event in Action Network. You probably see that link. Um, and that's a written out step-by-step -step instructions from the UK on all that stuff about which button to push and how to do everything, technical stuff, if you forget, it's all in that document. Um, some of the, some of that, those images I pinched out of that document that you saw earlier. So that's a terrific document to refer to um, on live streaming. All right then folks, well, I'll let you go. I'll stop the recording. Thanks everyone for coming. Thank you very much. You're Thanks. very welcome. Just one oh, last yes. question. I think you said yes. this is being recorded. Where will um, it be available? I will, once the recording is ready, I'll email it out to everyone who RSVP'd. I'll put it in Mattermost and wherever else I can think of. Cheers. Thanks. Okay. Thanks a lot for you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.